Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar. We'll start, we'll start in a few minutes uh, to give other people time to connect. Thank you for your patience. Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you to today's webinar, Unlocking Precision Medicine through Expert Panel, NGS Panel Design. My name is Gemma Abdet Garcia and I'm the EMEA Regional Marketing Manager at Twist Bioscience. I would like to give you a few housekeeping guidelines first. All lines will be muted during the webinar and if you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A rather than in the chat box. And we will answer all your questions after the presentation. If you share your name, we will be able to get back to you after the webinar if your questions have not been answered. Following the presentation, if you have one minute to take a brief survey, we would really appreciate your feedback. So I will go for today's webinar, Unlocking Precision Medicine through Expert NGS Panel Design is to guide you from the twist technology to the clinical utility. First, we'll have a short introduction about twist technology, and then we will learn how OncoDNA is using this technology to enable customers such as Dr. Marcel Stratzman on the day to day. So now I want to introduce you the three speakers for today. Our first speaker is James Flynn, Staff Product Manager at Twist Bioscience. James manages NGS target enrichment content and platform partnerships for Twist Bioscience. He has nearly a decade of product development experience across oligonucleotide chemistry, enzyme development, and single cell sequencing and multi-omic assay development. Our second speaker is OncoDNA Company. Uh, so initially we had Dr. Conrad Aiken, but uh, due uh, last minute change, we are we are going to have Sebastian Sobash. So Sebastian is the head of scientific support at OncoDNA, and he leads a dynamic team responsible for the meticulous curation of oncology data, enriching Onco KDAs of exclusive proprietary, exclusive proprietary database. Drawing upon his profound expertise in precision medicine, Sebastian plays a pivotal role in, a, in a, <laughs> assisting excuse me, laboratories and oncologists in seamlessly integrating the OncoDeep kit solution into their daily routines. His efforts significant, significantly contribute to optimizing processes, ensuring the attainment of superior clinical and biological interpretation for enhanced patient outcomes. And last but not least, we have Dr. Marcel Troutman, Assistant Professor and Head of the Molecular Diagnostics and Translational Cancer Research Lab at the Gerard Domac Institute of Pathology, excuse me if I didn't pronounce it correctly, in the University Hospital Munster. 
Dr. Trotman is responsible for the validation, implementation, automation, and the clinical interpretation of both laboratory developed tests and the in vitro diagnostic tests and their services in the institute. He brings over 10 years of experience in the application of genetic and molecular testing to guide clinical therapeutic decision making. So, James, you're the first speaker. Um, stage is yours. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon or uh, good morning uh, from wherever you're joining. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come. I'll just spend a few minutes giving an overview of TWIST platform and um, our capabilities with respect to OEM products. So with that, I will share my screen. Hopefully you can see this. Um, just a quick disclaimer um, that TWIST products are research use only um, and they're not for diagnostic purposes. They must be validated separately. So that's just our quick disclaimer. Um, TWIST Bioscience has been around since 2013. Um, they IPO'd in 2018. We have offices all over the world in San Francisco, our headquarters in South San Francisco, um, Tel Aviv, San Diego, and Singapore, as well as the recently opened in Portland, Oregon on the West Coast of the United States, we have what we call the Factory of the Future, which is a much larger space um, for our manufacturing capabilities. What makes TWIST different is our unique and proprietary silicon platform. So if you can imagine the traditional sense of manufacturing oligos is to make one batch or, or synthesis of oligo that would go into your standard SBS 96 well plate. And that can make about one gene if you, if you think about it on the synthetic biology side. Twist platform can have 1 million features in the same footprint as that, that same plate. And so the scale of throughput of oligo synthesis is 10,000 times more than um, what you'd see in a traditional oligo sense. So we, instead of making a single gene, we can make close to 10,000 genes um, per synthesis run on TWIST platform. And that allows us to do a lot of um, additional things that, that um, some of our other competitors can't. One other component to what TWIST does, um, which is very exciting, is that our manufacturing and, and scale of production because we've miniaturized the synthesis of the oligos is there's far less waste. So this is just a slide comparing the amount of material or the, the carbon output that's um, used in the synthesis of a gene. If you compared it to the traditional approach, you're talking about 95 kilometers worth of carbon that a car running uh, would produce. Compared to the twist, it's, it's less than a kilometer, 0.15 kilometers. So a 99 percent reduction in reagent volume. Uh, it just makes for a more efficient platform, less waste in the process. Um, I'll chat very briefly. Uh, we have a full range of uh, different business units within the organization. We we do gene synthesis, oligo pools, pools, excuse me, um, libraries. We've uh, the division doing data storage on DNA. Uh, as well as biopharma capabilities. But today I'll talk a little bit about our NGS portfolio and how our ability to synthesize DNA fits in with our suite of reagents for NGS solutions. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, I manage the fixed panel content, so all the catalog content. We also have complete capabilities to do custom panel, um, whichever your project or a particular scientific application. We have a whole team of bioinformatics uh, scientists, which can assist you with the design and iteration of those panels. We have uh, a full range of library preparation reagents for DNA sequencing, for RNA, uh, and for methylation. And to go along with that, we have all the hybridization reagents, uh, as well as controls for many assays you might want to have if you're having an oncology assay, you might want to have a control which has a particular variant in it. Or if, let's say you're doing um, pathogen detection, you might want to have a control. So all of those are within the, the suite of products for NGS solutions, and all of them could be available uh, for OEM projects. Um, I will mention as well, um, TWIST is ISO 1345 certified at uh, more than one of our sites at our Brisbane sites, at our factory of the future in Wilsonville, Oregon, as well as our headquarters in San Francisco. Um, and as I mentioned, all of the products I just mentioned are covered under that. Um, and then finally, I'll just touch upon some of our capabilities for OEM kitting for anybody who might be interested in having their own kit produced by TWIST. 
Um, we can do custom formulation, custom kitting. We can white label for any um, anyone else's branding. Um, the down to the specific tube types that you might need in those kits if you needed barcoded tubes. Um, those can all be done. Um, and so there's a full range of options available from Twist. Um, and we can configure these to really to meet anyone's needs, um, whether that's customer specific parts that we would need to source, particular fills and finishes that you would need uh, to integrate with whatever labware you or your customers might have, um, as well as having the workflow set up. We have a whole team of people to help with the onboarding process, to schedule shipments when you need. So we, we really are a one-stop shop as far as the OEM business is concerned. And we're happy to support partners like Onco DNA. And I believe that was my last slide. So with that, I will turn it over to Sebastian Savage and he'll talk a little bit more about the Onco DNA project. Uh, thank you, James. Um, so yes, I will start. Good morning first and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I will start to share my screen. And I will put in slide mode. I think it should be okay. Um, yes, so um, so today I will be probably introducing um, the, um, the OncoDeep uh, solution, uh, which is based, in fact, on, on a twist technology. So um, the, OncoDeep, uh, the OncoDeep kit is an end-to-end -end solution to, um, to help treatment decision and to bring, in fact, the, the precision medicine to, uh, to, the, to the oncologist. So, but before I will dive uh, right in, uh, let me do a short, a really short introduction uh, to OncoDNA. So, um, OncoDNA is a theranotic company uh, established in 2012, uh, focusing mainly on precision oncology. Uh, so, our headquarters are based in uh, Gosli in Belgium. And since 2012, uh, OncoDNA has been growing exponentially, expanding our footprint worldwide with entities in both France, uh, which we have there, a lab which is ClaiaCap certifies, and Spain. So um, we are around uh, are more or less 100 people working in uh, nine different countries, and we are present on uh, all the continents through uh, 35 distributors which are active. Um, during the, the, the tenth year um, uh, we worked, uh, we uh, worked with more than 400 uh, hospitals um, and also uh, research centers, and we have in our database currently more than uh, 100k sample analyze. <clears throat> uh, on, on, on this slide, there are uh, a few well-known names that we are collaborating with, for example, for clinical trial uh, purpose like Cura Oncology or the Breast International Group, um, as well the, as the NHS, for example, in the Guys and St. Thomas Hospital, but also Munster that will be presented after uh, the, this presentation uh, by Marcel Trotman. And in fact, those, those laboratories choose the, the oncology kit in their uh, uh, oncology routine. So to, to come back on, on the OncoDeep kit, at the, at the beginning of OncoDNA, we were working in a centralized model where, in fact, oncologists were sending a sample to the headquarters, and we were providing them a full report based on NGS analysis and other biomarkers like immunohistochemistry. Since one or two years, uh, in fact, the business model and also the rule change a little bit, and there is a clear need and a clear demand of uh, doing the sequencing in-house by, by the labs. Our solid tumor profiling kit is really designed to help the laboratories and healthcare centers to adopt comprehensive genomic profiling in-house. So the kit offers a complete workflow solution to screen a tumor tissue for hundreds of biomarkers associated with precision medicines and to analyze the data in full autonomy. So even laboratories with limited bioinformatics capabilities will have the tools required to advise oncologists in the selection of the most effective and personalized treatment for their patient. So as I, as I said, we, we have more than 10 years of, of knowledge and expertise in, in um, precision medicine. And regarding the bioinformatic tools and also the database, we developed since the beginning of the company uh, our own bio-IT pipeline as the uh, uh, biological and clinical interpretation of the variants. 
So that means that, for example, we have a database that includes no more than four million uh, variants documented, and we are following more than 1,600 drugs and also 10,000 clinical trials. And, and, and before giving the floor to, the, um, to Dr. Marcel Trotman, this, this slide, in fact, we, is really summarizing what, what is inside the, the Oncodip kit. It's, as I said, 10 years of, of knowledge and expertise. We put everything in a box that every lab can use uh, to sequence their, 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 their patient and then have a full report dedicated to the oncologist and, and to, to, find, to, 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 find, to try to find the, the, the right treatment for the, for the patient. This is really what, what is inside this, this box of the Oncodip kit. So now um, I would like to thank you and, and I will give you uh, the floor to, um, to, to Marcel Trotman. So I will stop sharing and Marcel, I will let you start. So thanks very much um, for, the, for the short introduction and welcome from Germany. Um, I will just share my slides and then we can we can go. Okay, there we are. So um, first of all, in the in the upcoming um, minutes or moments, I will give you a quick introduction of our way of validation and implementation of the Oncodeep kit for pan cancer comprehensive general profiling, which we do apply in day-to-day -day, uh, routine diagnostics, mainly for solid tumors. To give you an, yeah, let's say, quick overview of all the uh, technologies we do have available in our uh, pathology department or in within our clinical setup. We are mainly Illumina-based uh, sequencing um, focused. Um, so we have um, smaller scaled uh, platforms from the from the MiniSeq up to the to the NovaSeq available in our uh, clinical setup. And we started um, almost more than 15 years ago before we um, came to, to Münster um, using NGS for day-to-day -day, um, diagnostics, shifting from Sanger sequencing to the more complex NGS um, scenario. In uh, 2019, um, we got first introduced to CGP um, test based on the TSO500 um, product um, sold or offered by Illumina, uh, which was then shifted to or adapted to the twist-based um, Oncodeep approach in the end of 2022. 20, uh, and in the current setup, um, we just finalized the automation of the um, Oncodeep um, kit for our day-to-day -day, um, clinical routine approaches. From a panel perspective, um, just like I said before, um, almost 15 years ago, we started with an Amplicon-based technology approach um, provided by uh, Kyogen, um, only three, um, three smaller um, panel approaches. Um, here you do see on the, on the button scale, the number of genes. This is by time increased. Um, and we shifted to Illumina-based hybrid capture um, technology, mainly due to technical um, issues uh, we are all aware of when you think of Amplicon-based um, approaches. So we had um, high demand of specific tumor types, which are um, in need of being sequenced or diagnosed, especially sarcomas. So all these were once we went for a customized approach in our clinical setup. And by the late uh, 2022, we then shifted to a pan cancer approach provided by Oncodeep, which we were kind of uh, blind dated um, or introduced um, by uh, a TRIS representative. In parallel, you do see a uh, high increase of genomic content being simultaneously um, analyzed or um, sequenced for, uh, mainly either on a DNA level with the Oncodeep um, approach, or um, we still use an RNA fusion panel from Illumina covering more than 500 genes for all these uh, fusion gene detection approaches, especially in, in wear sarcomas. And um, by um, late uh, 2023, uh, we are all driven by dynamics of whole exome, whole genome approaches, which is something which we do apply in parallel um, for our molecular tumor board. 
So um, when you just without going into, into clinical details or genomic details, when you have a quick uh, look at all these uh, alterations or biomarkers, which we are in daily need of to be, to be um, yeah, let's say, assessed for or to be screened for, it's pretty clear that um, we are in need of an, let's say, technical approach um, where we can where we can test or assess multiple biomarkers alteration in a one-step um, scenario um, for multiple tumor types, multiple tumor entities. And uh, this is just not, um, not even the, the most accurate, um, let's say, overview of alterations. Um, it's just a very dynamic and evolving um, scale, which we um, all have to adjust our clinical setup or our molecular tumor board and our sequencing approaches to. So going for a uh, CGP approach compared to an, let's say single gene or single biomarker approach does make sense at least for, for us in our um, clinical setup. Um, so to start with um, why um, CGP is, is so important or so applicable, um, first of all, um, when we when we made the shift from TSO 500 to to OncoDeep, we mainly ask ourselves what are we wishing for. So this is usually my concluding slide. So um, here is just a, the summary of all the attributes or properties which we are in need of or which we would ask for in an um, in a kit provider scenario. So first of all, it's supposed to be a pan cancer approach. So focusing not on a a single tumor type specific uh, gene set that the pan cancer approach where you have, um, let's say a one fits all solution. And um, it should be up to date uh, with the biomarker uh, matched therapeutic uh, selections, uh, which we have to, to adjust in our molecular tumor board. Complex biomarkers like HRD, TMB, MSI, independent of the clinical utility of TMB um, is uh, supposed to be, um, let's say covered by the, by the panel. Um, and um, all these fusion genes, which are uh, from a therapeutical um, perspective relevant, like NTREC, uh, NRG1, Alcross, RED, you name all these um, fusion genes, they should also be accessible by, by at least the RD workflow of a CGP approach. CNVs is, of course, of, um, of major interest. Um, and this is here indicated in yellow um, or in yellowish because um, the, um, sorry, yeah, in yellow, the green ones are um, properties which are already validated, implemented and tested for, so we can make a tick in between or um, behind it for the OncoDeep um, kit um, compared to um, competitors on the, on the market. The second one is um, as we have the sequencing capacity in-house, uh, we said, okay, we want, don't wanna use uh, sent out options. So it's supposed to be a kit uh, to be used um, in-house in your own um, environment as we are mainly focusing on FFP uh, archived um, tissue specimens. Um, this should be applicable for DNA as well as for RNA. And, and based on the twist background, the automation, when you think of all these additional applications uh, Twist is offering. Automation um, is uh, something which we um, had to keep in mind when we shifted from, let's say, Illumina approaches to, to the Twist approaches, because um, they are more like harmonized if you go from the exome to the CGP or the RNA workflow. So it's more comparable and easier to do uh, the automation. Turnaround on times, um, due to our clinical needs, um, are, um, of course, um, pleasurable uh, situation. So five days was the was the frame we were um, heading for. IVD um, clearance is always of a major benefit and it's not a decision breaker for us, but it was nice to have. So sequencing platform, Illumina, just like I said before, scalability is something which we currently, uh, which we are currently uh, working on. Um, so on the next seek scale, just as a quick overview, uh, eight samples are capable to be sequenced. Um, and this is um, then something which can be scaled on the, on the Seek, which we are currently um, testing, and a field application support um, is always handy and needed for or requested for once you are working in a clinical scenario. Um, field application, if you do an uh, implementation, validation, or follow up, troubleshooting, whatever, um, which is experienced and um, let's say. 
um, easy to, to get in contact with is, is a major need in our clinical scenario. And then, which is one of the um, striking advantages of the all-in-one OncoDeep uh, kit scenario is the harmonized bio team. So you have the library prep, which is being conducted um, in, in our scenario by ourselves in an, in an automated manner. But you also have an um, automated bio IT um, doing all the, the, the QC, the variant identification, um, and doing clinical decision supporting, which we do use for our molecular tumor board. And then you also have a scientific and medical team on hand uh, providing additional information, advice, or um, troubleshooting once you are requesting it. And of course, uh, for the molecular tumor board, again, a comprehensive report is, uh, it is uh, customizable, is uh, being generated on a per sample scale, uh, which is very handy to be uh, attached to our uh, pathology or molecular uh, pathology report. Uh, something which we are currently also working on is uh, data management and visualization. Um, so that you can easily address um, questions like, what is the cohort size of a specific tumor type um, or a specific alteration in the overall spectrum of the patients we do see or treat in our clinical scenario? So this was the, the wishing list we started with. The green ones are addressed. They're all ticked by the, the kit and the yellow ones are um, the ones we are still working on. So um, choosing the most effective um, test is uh, critical. Um, at least from my personal perspective. And if you keep all the biomarkers and alterations, which we are in need of uh, to, be, to be screened for, for let's say a lung cancer patient, um, it does make a sense to have an, um, not a sequential approach, but a time-saving, um, most effective, uh, comprehensive genomic approach. If you, if, you, if you have a single biomarker testing, um, of course you can, you can do it, it's, it's reasonable, but it's just a question of uh, turnaround times um, to come to a final uh, therapeutic intervention decision-making. So um, the next um, option would be to go for multiplex um, approach where you can combine SMVs, indels, for example, but most of the time you're not capable to do the, 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 let's say the testing or the assessment of the more complex signatures like HRD, MSI, TMB in parallel. Uh, the only option um, besides whole exome, whole genome is an um, comprehensive NGS approach here. The OncoDeep one is combining at least for the DNA um, set up uh, more than 600 genes, uh, HRD, MSI, TMB, um, as I um, showed before. So um, this is not just a um, turnaround uh, time-saving issue, but it's also when you think of the um, clinical scenario or the diagnostic scenario of an um, lung cancer um, uh, biopsy material, which is usually from a, from a material perspective, uh, we are quite often lacking sufficient material. So this is a major issue not to go for sequential testing and saving uh, precious uh, bio biopsy material. Um, here is a short summary of what are um, the properties of the, the panel. Um, just like I said, more than 600 genes, MSI, TMB, all these um, biomarkers, which are for clinical purposes or application relevant. Um, to compare with, these are, here indicated all the customized uh, tumor type specific panels we do still run based on a customized Illumina approach. They're working more than fine. Um, they are mainly um, designed either for additional research purposes, mainly here indicated by the, by the red genes, um, which are not covered by the OncoDeep kit. That's why we still use these smaller approaches for research purposes or for specific clinical trials, which we do support uh, within our um, clinical setup. Um, but you see that um, the content is, um, is, is increased um, and only a minority of genes which are out of um, research purposes, not of major clinical utility. In Germany, at least um, the, um, the benchmark uh, to compete with or to compare yourself with is the TSO 500, which is also doing what it's supposed to do. Um, Illumina came up with an spike in HRD option, which is um, 
which is uh, working. It's a benchmark in, in Germany. But if you compare the content, um, I usually do say it's kind of outdated um, to the needs we are um, facing with or addressed with. So if you check all the differential genes covered by the TSO500 um, or the OncoDeep panel, once you see um, at the bottom one gene which is um, which you are in need of in your um, clinical practice, um, the green ones are only covered by the OncoDeep kit. So there's um, the indicated gap comparing these two, two panels. The only gene here indicated um, in, in red on the, on the top left corner is the Turk gene, which I haven't been uh, crossed over in any uh, clinical scenario. The, the, the gray ones are just identical uh, genes, just uh, different um, namings for um, uh, the two, um, two, two, two panel contents. So that's an first of all uh, overview. Um, coming to a more practical scenario, what is our um, diagnostics routine uh, timeline? Here, usually uh, we do differentiate in between the manual library prep. Uh, this is specific to our scenario because we have like part-time um, laboratory staff members um, that that is why the library prep is sometimes um, longer than or up to three days. If we do um, process the, the, the samples in, in our automated workflow, it's a um, reduced time frame of uh, one and a half days. Um, so we start on, on Tuesdays, um, being ready on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Sequencing um, here on the, on the next week um, indicated does take less than 24 hours. And then we transfer um, the, the genomic, um, or not the genomic, sorry, the, the FASTQ files for the uh, secondary and uh, third line um, analytics, which just take um, less than uh, 48 hours for us to receive the the clinical interpretation or to do our reporting and um, let's say profiling of the specific cancer patients we are in need of to, to file any, any report or um, MTB um, yeah, interpretation. So overall it's a five um, workday uh, setup in our scenario. Um, here, just an indication or a short overview of what we um, managed to, to autom automatize. Of course, a DNA RNA extraction is automated um, on, a, on a Kyogen or a Promega setup. Um, the library prep, uh, we did split into um, um, two to three um, steps. The first is library prep uh, being conducted um, in less than uh, three hours, comprising all the um, expected steps from fragmentation, ligation, amplification. So there's no rocket science uh, behind this part. This, the first intervention point is the QC and the pooling um, where we stop the, the automation of robotic system. And the second one is the target enrichment overnight for um, approximately uh, 16 hours. Um, and then we have the second intervention points where we do um, adjust the uh, consumables, the reagents uh, for the post-capturing, uh, followed by the final uh, QC steps, um, and uh, then followed by the sequencing and the analytics. So here in the middle part, that's the, um, the automation, uh, mainly focusing on the Onke uh, Deep um, Kit scenario or workflow, which we did succeed um, together with Beckman Coulter and the support of uh, Onke DNA. Um, to give you an um, additional um, feeling, uh, we are the, within Germany, the, the first um, laboratory or medical infrastructure um, within the German network of personalized medicine to implement the OncoDeep um, uh, kit for a CGP um, uh, testing. Um, just like I said before, there's an bunch of uh, vendors or products on the market being Illumina, um, Kyogen, Tomo Fisher. We just, um, um, yeah, based on our wishing list, went for um, OncoDNA um, in, the, in the first place. And now it's kind of evolving, at least in a German scenario, that more and more laboratories at least are testing it based on our um, experience and our, um, let's say, communication. So um, to have a 
let's say, summary of what we did in 2023, just by the numbers, and uh, more than uh, 650 uh, samples have been sequenced um, per average um, to, to library preps per week. And we came up with the um, reflex testing for at least these six uh, tumor types comprising NSCLC patients, prostate, ovarian cancers, uh, which all um, do receive the CGP uh, approach as first-hand uh, diagnostics um, independent of the staging or uh, whether it's a relapse scenario, metastatic um, situation whatsoever. Um, the failure of QC uh, mainly due to um, low input um, based on lacking material being available. Um, so the average um, or the recommended input is uh, 30 nanograms up to 100 nanograms. Um, even if we see that it's um, down below, let's say 10 nanograms, we still try to push our luck. And these are these cases mainly failing um, due to the reduced uh, coverage um, with an reduced uh, QC uh, checking of um, overall less than 3% of all samples. But most of the time, the explanation is um, the already known low uh, DNA input uh, concentration. So how did we implement and validate um, the, the panel? Of course, there are multiple approaches. Um, there are multiple guidelines and um, recommendations. We had at least these four steps in a parallel or sequential manner. So first of all, we went for um, samples previously tested via NGS, immunosochemistry, fish. So we knew uh, what to, to be looking for. Um, so the genome or the, the signature was um, known to us already. Um, then uh, second approach is to go for a, a commercial quality controlled reference material. Either um, in our scenario, we went for Horizon products or Seracare. Um, and um, of course we um, applied and um, attended um, external quality assessment uh, schemes where we did the testing for HRD, multi-gene um, scenarios or the lung cancer related markers uh, when you think of uh, Alcross Red, Met, X14 skipping, for example. And then for the fusion gene detection, which is also being, um, uh, let's say capable or the OncoDeep um, DNA workflow is also capable to, to detect um, Alcross Red um, alterations. Uh, this was tested in parallel to our state-of-the-art RNA-seq fish immunosochemistry approach. So just to give a uh, short overview, um, this is of course um, data which has been multiple times being being repeated by different laboratory staff members. And this is just a summary. Here you do see just for a quality controlled reference material in the, the red dots do um, indicate the expected um, variant allele fraction um, being, being reported by the, by the vendor or the provider. And on the left, there's the 100 nanograms, which we did um, do an initial uh, testing, whether the concentration does have any, any impact and the 200 nanograms input. And you do see that the expected um, um, variants were all um, capable to be covered and, and screened for. Um, a second example is an FFPE um, reference material where you also have the, the identical setup, expected um, variant um, allele frequency indicated by the red dots. On the left, there are 100 nanograms and 200 nanograms. And you do see that down below 2% um, of um, variant allele frequency um, or fraction, um, the, the, the CGP panel wasn't capable to detect in this specific um, experiment the, the down below 2% uh, alterations, which is um, still very handy because usually um, when you when you when you are aiming for these low uh, frequencies to be detected, when you think of detection uh, limitations, uh, usually this is something which we would address with an um, droplet digital PCR approach and not an NGS approach. Um, a third one was the um, HRD testing. And we also um, went for commercial available um, material or reference material. Um, here, the benchmark is um, the TIS500 um, genomic instability score. And just as an example here, we went for the HRD high um, material reference um, indicated um, or having a separation in between low input material down to eight nanograms or um, within the range of recommended uh, more than 30 nanograms. And you do 
see even down below um, 10 nanograms, the, the results of the HRD testing and the scoring was very comparable and very stable. Um, additional testing or validation um, purpose we did um, conduct was an EQ, um, EQA for HRD testing. So we did um, receive 10 ovarian cancer samples, FFP samples with uh, different um, tumor cell contents. Um, the standard um, of, or the benchmark um, to be compared with is the, or was the my choice um, a test from Myriad Genomics. And the turnaround times um, by the organi um, organizing bodies were 15 working days. And the overall, um, the overall kind of shocking uh, result was that 20% of the participants um, or the participating labs uh, failed to submit the, the correct um, result. If we dig into these um, these uh, data um, for for short for a short period, um, the the green squares does indicate the supposed to be um, submitted or tested or received results um, for these 10, 10 samples. And so uh, six times um, there was supposed to be a positive and four times supposed to be a negative case being diagnosed or screened for. Um, for two cases, um, the laboratories or um, less than 10 laboratories did um, submit technical issues with these specific um, specimens or received samples. And um, if you check for the, the, the false negative ones, um, you do see that um, eight times a false negative um, result was reported by one of these uh, participants and even 10 false positive results were uh, reported in the, in the interpretation of the overall EQA success, indicating the failure uh, weight of 20%. And um, if you kind of check uh, what kind of essays or technology was applied by all these different participants, you do see that more than 95% did use an NGS-based technology. Here, um, just like I said before, the, we were the only laboratory or medical infrastructure using the OncoDeep um, kit in here highlighted in, in in, in green, uh, sorry, in, in blue. And the green indication, it does um, summarize um, when the kit, uh, which was used by whatever number of, of laboratories was sufficient for each and every um, participant to, to pass the EQA. Uh, of course, to keep in mind, um, there are um, kits and providers with only um, one laboratory using it. Um, the majority was the Amoy DX um, HRD panel, which was used, um, followed by the Kyogen, the TSO 500 one, or the um, uh, Thermo Fisher approach. Um, if you check um, the failure rates, um, depending on the, the essays, you do see, uh, focusing on the Kyogen approach, um, the highest failure rates was um, demonstrated by a Kyogen approach, um, in the interpretation, it was more a bio-IT um, issue and not a panel issue. But you do see that there's um, the more, um, let's say, participants um, you do have. Um, here are individual laboratories uh, for the TSO 500 as well as the Thermo Fisher um, assay, which uh, didn't succeed in the, in the testing. And then um, something which we also tested was the NSCLC fusion gene detection based on DNA. So that's um, critical to keep in mind because usually our state of the art is RNA based, but this is an information we do also receive in parallel conducting the CGP. So um, we used our um, samples previously tested and here also just a very short uh, summary of samples or diver diverse uh, set of samples, which we screened for. Um, tumor cell content down to 20% and down below 30 nanograms input. Um, and here uh, samples previously either tested by immunosuchemistry chemistry fish, even uh, negatively previously tested, the FASTQ uh, Diatech RT-PCR approach or the gold standard RNA-seq. And you do see that the OncoDeep um, approach based on DNA, uh, which is uh, critical in, in this scenario here, was capable to detect each and every alteration which we were screening or hoping for. And then we also went for um, um, commercial reference material, uh, which is cell line derived. So you have a spike in of different cell lines. And also over here, 
um, all these expected to be um, seen or to be uh, positive screen for um, fusions were were detected in our um, repetitive um, scenario. And then we also uh, conducted a, a third um, EQA, only focusing on Alcross Red and MATX14 skipping approaches. In green indicated all these um, detected, um, detected uh, variants or alterations, at least in our submission. And here you also see that the success rate is even down below compared to the HRD one, which is pretty striking. And when you think of all these clinical, um, um, let's say, uh, decisions, we have to, to, to come to a final conclusion, either in our molecular tumor board, if you, if you are aware of a failure rate of almost 30%, it's kind of, let's say, there's need for, for improvement. So we were pretty, pretty um, let's say, convinced and happy that um, OncoDeep um, panel was superior compared to um, different vendors, which I'm not aware of because interpretation is still, uh, or the final report is still being waited for. Um, to, to come to the final, final part, um, what is the, what is the bio IT or the decision support platform um, looking like? Also here, no rocket science behind it. And the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you have a harmonized product and the library prep as well as the bio team. So the secondary or third line and analytics is um, identical to each and every vendor on the market. Um, it's just the uh, clinical validation um, and uh, the, the clinical interpretation and the reporting, which is customizable, does stick out at least from, from uh, my personal point of view. But um, in the end, it's not a kind of a black box. You, you, you can do your adjustments. You have um, all the relevant biomarkers um, all being analyzed and QC'd in an, in an standardized interface, which is um, indicated uh, over here for the uh, last few slides. So you have for each and every um, patient, you have an interface summarizing different topics like a comprehensive summary and all the approved drugs or biomarkers uh, clinical trials being associated to the individual genomic profile so this is being generated automatically after uh, maximum 48 hours and then you can do your in detail um, uh, let's say genomic diving uh, on a on a patient uh, individual patient um, scale um, just as an ex as an example for the other biomarker um, scenario you do have um, these three biomarkers listed and the results over here the scoring is indicated the results and a small conclusion with um, publications being associated to it and um, it's not the black box and um, you do you um, receive all the information how the scoring is being conducted and what are the thresholds. So this is, um, this is being provided. If you check all the variants or the genomic um, profile um, on an individual scale, you can do a filtering um, depending on the, um, let's say, a variant type or the biological pathological uh, impact from pathogenic to, to benign, whatsoever. So you can, you can filter it. And then you also do receive a summary of the gene, the, the variant frequency, or the indication whether you are supposed to check um, a germline um, indication or scenario in, in parallel. Um, this is something which is very handy, at least for our molecular tumor board, and that's a drug section where you do see all the approved, already approved, either by the AMA or the FDA, what, whatsoever the, the body is, um, drug in association to the specific biomarker or the genomic profile. Uh, you can also filter it on a clinical uh, benefit or whatever um, the, the filter is supposed to be, or the approval status, um, either being in a specific um, individual tumor type or being approved in, an, in a different tumor type. This is um, also being indicated here to, um, to, to discuss in the molecular tumor board. Um, you also do receive a, a shortcut summary of the therapeutic options to, to choose from. Um, you have all the informations on clinical trials, um, which is linked with the uh, clinicaltrials.gov webpage and for uh, the decision or um, the inc patient um, properties or genomes um, or specifications um, for the enrollment um, in, a, in a specific clinical trial. You can filter it based on the, the country of clinical trial being conducted in and the publications uh, which are associated uh, to the clinical trial.
trial being run or being uh, being conducted. And uh, the final one is the, the clinical report, which is an uh, automated, um, uh, let's say, report. You can customize it um, by the information you want to have um, included. You can erase um, information, but it's still standardized. You can uh, kind of sign it off and you can attach it to, to the report or discuss it in the molecular tumor, which we frequently do. Um, with this said, um, I do apologize for the extension of the time and um, welcome for any questions being raised. Thanks very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me again? Yes. I think you can hear me. You cannot see me now and there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it has been a really, really nice uh, three presentation. So if the speakers want to uh, plug the cameras in, we can take some questions that are in the chat. Okay, so we have had a lot of questions, but we have been trying our best to answer them while we were on the on the chat. I want to remind you that please put them on the Q&A box, not on the chat. Uh, so we can come back to you also afterwards. Okay, let me see. Okay, um, so the first one, I guess that is for you, Sebastian. Um, is the Oncodeep only compatible with Illumina technology and with the Illumina sequencers? Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a good it's a good question. Um, indeed, uh, in fact, we have at the moment a strong validation uh, dossier on Illumina platform. So, um, starting from the NextSeq 500 until the Nova CX, uh, so we cover all the the device. Um, of course, there there is a huge huge demand uh, about uh, element, element bioscience and also MGI. So, we are currently validating the Oncodeep kit on this platform. Um, so I can already say that the results are really good. So uh, probably uh, we'll build, uh, I would say, a, a, a very strong uh, validation dossier also for these two platform. And then you will be able to use the Oncodic kit um, in, uh, in Element and probably MGI. Perfect, good. Um, we have... Um, well, we're, there is a lot of people that is saying that it was a great talk, so I I, I do agree too. <laughs> I have my bias, but I do agree. <laughs> um, so we have a question from Nick. Uh, do you have um, do you have the reporting of variants yourself, or does the bio bio it uh, does it for does it for you? So do you do you provide the the service of reporting various uh, variants? I guess that this is the this is a question. Uh, as far as we have uh, our proprietary database, uh, of course we will do we we'll report the biological impact and the, the the therapeutical impact of all the variants we will discover in the in the NGS. So we'll you will have access to all the variants. That mean um, the pathogenic one, the likely pathogenic VUS, likely benign and benign. And regarding, for example, the, um, the PDF version of the report, um, we are only, let's say, obliged to put the likely pathogenic and, and the pathogenic one and the VUS inside the, the PDF. But yes, you will have access to all the, the, the classification of the variants. Perfect. Um, we have a question that is probably more for Dr. Uh, Troutman. Um, what is the minimum quantity of DNA that you would require or that you would like, I guess, because that depends a lot, sample to sample, but to obtain the best uh, interpretation, the best results? So from our um, experience, uh, which we mainly focus on FFP archived material, so that's... Um, always discussed uh, critical situation, uh, but usually um, sticking to the recommended um, 30 nanograms is more than sufficient, at least from our um, perspective. Um, we still go down below, even down to five nanograms as input, um, because we usually try to push our luck um, and we don't um, want to, let's say, 
um, or we at least want to, to give a patient a chance of receiving the maximum possible or the best possible um, testing being available. So if we have the QC failure being indicated um, in line to a in low input, we already know that it's due to um, the material being being provided or available and not um, the, the kit itself. So we do, um, let's say, file and report within limited um, not to be capable to be analyzed due to low DNA content or due to low DNA quality. Um, so going down to 10 nanograms, at least from our, um, our um, perspective and expertise is sufficient. Um, what you have to keep in mind is that even having 600, more than 600 um, genes, of course you do receive an QC list of the a gene specific uh, coverage, um, an alpha list, they call it, uh, where specific hotspots or therapeutic relevant um, alterations are highlighted. Um, so you can still kind of receive information of, of um, let's say, focused um, alterations, even when the, let's say, overall coverage is being reduced um, to whatever the threshold is. Um, so you can still, let's say, receive the information of NRAS, KRAS, EGFR uh, status, for example, um, although not, let's say, 80% of the six, more than 600 genes are covered by more than 500 um, X coverage, for example, just to name some, some numbers. Yeah. Perfect. Good, thank you. And that's um, even, sorry, and that's even sufficient for the fusion gene detection. I mean, uh, we did it with HRD um, going down to eight nanograms um, because we only had eight nanograms available. But in, if you if you compare it and the consistency of the scoring and the overall HRD status, this was um, very stable. And it's the same for the fusion gene detection. I mean, if you have a fusion, um, even down below um, 10 nanograms, uh, we had a situation that it was capable to detect um, the fusion gene in a, in a proper manner. I guess that this will answer. Thank you for your complete answer. Um, okay, we have a question about the automation, but I think that we have been answering uh, some questions on the chat around automation. I don't know if you, maybe Sebastian, want to uh, explain a little bit more what kind of automation services uh, you can provide. I, th I think, I think in fact, Marcel, Marcel will be the best one, let's say, uh, okay. to answer this question because he just, let's say, ran several samples on several automated systems. So yes, probably Marcel, it's better if you can. Yeah, sure. No problem. So um, for us, um, automation um, is, is, I mean, it's a dynamic um, either addressing um, high demands on uh, sample volumes to be screened in a certain turnaround times or um, the lack of staff members being available due to the pandemic situation whatsoever. So there was a high demand on, on automation to standardize our laboratory infrastructure. And um, we were in a lucky position of having not only Beckman Coulter as a, as a partner um, to, to support it with the, with the um, let's say, automation itself, but also um, technical support from OncoDNA. Um, so, Somebody from the technical force team just came to our medical infrastructure, did all the implementation, the testing, and the checking. Um, that from a technical perspective, everything was running smoothly. We did some adjustments uh, together with Beckman Coulter, but this was uh, a thumbs up, uh, very straightforward, and it didn't take us longer. Um, um, if you take out the Christmas time and New Year's Eve and all this stuff, where nothing was uh, done on the on the automation, um, but it took us less than, I would say, uh, two months um, until we received sufficient indication that automation is um, capable to be performed with the OncoDeep um, panel. Um, I can also show you in summarized slide um, if there's interest um, indicating some comparison between the manual and, uh, and uh, um, automated um, procedure. Yeah, I guess that if someone is like interested, maybe they can put because we are almost, <clears throat> excuse me, at the top of the hour. So I guess that if someone has uh, wants to see this data, maybe they can put the comments on the Q and A so we can share it uh, later. Uh, because we, I don't think yep. that we can take all the questions, so it could be we can do that. 
Um, yeah, we have a yes, please. So yeah, <laughs> if you can put, uh, we will have a seat with a name, I guess that we can do it. Um, we have one question for you, James. Um, so this was like all about sharing how we partnerships also with uh, with other uh, companies to, to ensure the um, that we we help them to to reach their goals. So one person asked if we can like do modification on existing twist products and if we can uh, create the branded products, uh, branded boxes for their products. So is that how we collaborate with uh, with other companies? Is that possible? Yes, that that is absolutely possible. Um, we call that's why I mentioned on our slide white label. If you would like to have your branding on the outside of the box, that's certainly something that's an option. So I would invite you to. Um, get in chat and we can certainly have a meeting and discuss all of the options for OEM solutions. Perfect. And now we are exactly on the top of the hour. So I would say that we stop making, <laughs> taking questions. Otherwise we'll, we will be here forever. Um, yeah, we have a lot of people like uh, thanking us for the talk. I think it was really, really, really nice. So thank you uh, for the speakers for having the time and thank you for everyone to join. We will share the recording and we will have it on our website, but also on Onco DNA. Uh, they will they will have the recording. So feel free to reach any of us <laughs> if you want more more information. So thank you so much, everyone, and I hope you have a, a nice day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.